Another AliExpress oddity. This wasn't that expensive. That isn't usually a good sign. And it's a UVC LED designed to operate on 12 to 24 volts and fit into a water tank with a waterproof seal. And when it's screwed on from the outside, it basically sanitizes the water in a small enclosure. And it's touted as being for drinking water units where the water chillers are using a tank of water, an internal reservoir, and it's just a low throughput of water. And I can show you this operator, but I can't prove what wavelengths it's putting out. So let's plug this into this little adapter I've made, and we'll power it up, and at 12 volts, hold on, just getting sure these cables don't touch. At 12 volts, it's drawing 30 milliamps, and it is emitting visible ultraviolet, but that's because it's a multiple chip system. I can see there's three little chips in this LED. The one on the right is the violet chip, just to show it's operating. Then is the UVC LED, and then on the other side is probably a protection doubt. Not sure. There's also a little resistor in the package here, which I think might just be for setting the current through the visible LED. Now, I do have the UVC test card down here. And if I zoom down, this is where it all gets super grainy because, focus on that, um, because this is maximum zoom. So if I put this near the UVA detector panel, it shows it changing colour because that is a UVA emitting style LED in there, this a purple one. However, if I put it near the UVC, you can barely see it glowing, but if I turn the light off, you can see it does stimulate the phosphor. So this is probably putting out UVC. I have tried holding this. Watch your eyes, the light is coming back. I have tried holding this up to my hand and doing the sniff test by sniffing my hand first and then basically holding the UVC source close to the hand uh, and then give it a while to bake with the UVC. Keep in mind, this is low power. Not really getting anything, but having said that, it is exciting the phosphor, and that is usually just excited only by the UVC. Anyway, let's take a closer look at this. This is where the spectrometer that I loaned from Naomi Wu would be very nice, but I had to send that back, owing to the fact it was cripplingly expensive. We're talking like well over a grand for a device that can only measure from about 200 nanometer up to 400 nanometer, very narrow um, bandwidth. So we've got a little buck regulator here, and we can take the sleeving off this, and we can reverse engineer that. This has a little rubber ceiling ring around it, but I think the glass is probably glued on. This will be UVO glass, if you're ever using a real one of these. This may be real. Um, then, if you touch this glass, make sure you clean it with isopropyl alcohol or something afterwards. This is turning. This all oh, it's just on with a little rubber cup. That's interesting. Now, another thing I'm noticing here. Can you see that the LED isn't quite sat down onto that heat sinking surface? It's sitting proud above it. I would have rather that was glued onto that so that, you know, it was thermally mated because uh, at this point in time, it's not really going to be able to dissipate heat into the back plate here. And this is glued in here. Can it push down? Not really, because the wires, the way the wires have come out, it's basically stopping it from pushing down. Maybe the wires are super short. Maybe you could clamp that down after squirting some adhesive underneath it, some thermal silicon. Or you might have to just get rid of the silicone out here and uh, then release the whole lot. And can we do that? I'm done. Where is a suitable screwdriver? Here is a suitable screwdriver. What happens if we go like this? Oh, that is kind of jam-packed in there. Oh, they've really filled that up. Okay. But anyway, you could theoretically improve this. It's nice that it comes apart so easily. Right, tell you what. Let's get a blade into the little regulator, which looks very much like the inline regulators that you find in uh, the lasers, the 12-volt laser power supplies. 
the current does fluctuate with the supplied voltage, so it is a proper buck regulator, I think. We'll find out when we open it. And it starts, the LED starts glowing at around about 6 volts, which kind of tallies up with uh, the UVC LEDs. OK, what we got, what we got. OK, I shall take a picture of this and we can reverse engineer it. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete and we're back once again with the Renegade Master D4 damage of power to the people. This is a close-up of the LED. It's got the UVA type chip for visual effect, the one that uh, changed the colour of the UVA detector material. And I think that resistor is in series with that, but probing about on the circuit board and the resistor, I couldn't get this to glow with the small current from the meter. This, I think, is the UVC chip because there's this ghostly pale blue. When I when I scrutinised it through a magnifying glass, it just seems such a bad idea to do to one of these when they're lit. And this is a protection component. I'm not sure if that's just a little diode that protects it against opposite polarity or something to prevent film breakdown. Not really sure. Um, it turns out it's running at quite low current. It's running at 59 milliamps because I measured it. I did all the work, took this... Uh, apart, then put it back together with translucent sleeving on it. But before finalising, sliding the sleeving across, I put the meter in line with the LED to measure the current. So it is based, and I'll zoom in on this, on a PT4211B uh, LED driver that's normally used for things like LED downlights. Say, for instance, your 12-volt MR16 downlights. So it starts off with the positive supply coming in via a Schottky diode. And then there's a smoothing capacitor there. The chip itself, which just has four connections used, it's got a pulse of modulation input for dimming purposes. Then there's a sense resistor, 3.3 ohm, and a inductor and a capacitor across the LEDs. And then there's a freewheel diode, but it's another uh, Schottky diode which they've shown in their schematics as a Zener diode, but it's not, as a Schottky diode. Let's take a look at the actual schematic. I should say 221, that's 220 microhenries. I shall add that to the schematic. 220 microhenries. So here's what's happening. There's a polarity protection diode, that's nice. There is a capacitor, there's the chip. And it's also worth mentioning that another chip which tallied up with this was the UM1350, very much a standard pinout for uh, current regulation chips. It's one of these saturated markets where everybody's vying to get their chips put into someone's product. In operation, the LX pin is switched to the negative rail. And this is very similar to other circuitry that we've shown, the current sensing circuitry, with, but in a slightly different format. It's going up to the positive rail for the sense resistor. There's a 3.3 ohm sense resistor, and that goes to the sense input, which detects 200 millivolts as a threshold. When this turns on, current flows through that sense resistor, through the LED, and is inhibited by the inductor, and as the magnetic field built, fuel builds up in the inductor, the current will potentially increase. When it reaches the threshold, though, 3.3 ohms, it turns the circuit off. And when it turns it off, the magnetic field across the inductor collapses and it produces reverse voltage, which then goes through this extra Schottky diode and gets channeled through the LED to charge up that capacitor. So I measured 59 milliamps. I wonder what current would actually be. Hold on, where's the kink calculator? Kink calculator. Uh, I equals V over R. That's 0.2, which is the 200 millivolts. Let's actually type in 0.2, shall we? 0.2, 200 millivolts, divided by 3.3 equals 60 milliamps. Very close to what I got. That will be the slight tolerance of the resistor, probably. So they've just chosen the nearest value of standard resistor to get roughly 60 milliamps through the LEDs. It also means that the the low current of this, the 60 milliamps flowing through the LED, is not that dramatic. I would expect there to be about 5 volts dropped across that. So that's going to be about 300 milliwatts. So in that basis, it's not so bad that the 
the circuit board isn't mounted directly down onto this plate, although I would prefer it to be sandwiched onto that plate uh, so that when it's actually put into the housing, it's going to couple heat into the glass and this metal frame that's just going to keep that just a little bit cooler for maximum life. Uh, talking of life, just because it's lit doesn't mean it's putting out UVC if the if the UVC chip itself fails, but the purple one doesn't. Um, I suppose ultimately you just have to have a routine of testing these things. But that's it. A very basic LED driver as used for other lights, like the little inline spotlights and uh, for lasers and stuff like that. And a standard UVC LED. And that's the package you have for uh, sterilising little tanks of water. Quite interesting. Very useful little thing.